it's that time again. It is time for a review of Windows feature update 2004. It's been a little bit since my last feature update, so uh, most people know when I started the channel out, I had a lot of Windows content specifically geared over de-bloating and removing things from Windows, and then I got so fed up with the bad feature updates of 1803 and 1809 that I switched to Linux. And uh, I didn't really cover the 1903 or 1909 releases because they were kind of like, meh, some bad, some good, but overall just a very meh uh, update. And now we're up to 2004. And I really expected to go into this video wanting to roast 2004 as Microsoft for the past couple of years has made it a point that it's so easy to do. It's just like throwing softballs up for me to just knock out of the park. So I ran my initial test and I can't really roast it. It's actually, dare I say, a good Windows update. I, I, I was not sure such a thing still existed, but uh, I wanna go over all of the features in this one and then also go over benchmarking. So the features, I, there's a ton of feature videos on YouTube and they string it all out to 10 minutes. I'm gonna try and do all the features in two minutes and really focus more on the benchmarking aspects because the benchmarks, I was so surprised by my initial benchmarks that I went to my other PC that had dual boot windows on it, booted into that windows, ran my benchmark, upgraded it to 2004 and then reran it and got a very similar result. And I was just kind of taken aback by this because it's been a while since we had a good windows update and 2004 is good. So let's get into the features and then also the performance and actual benchmarks that I ran. I do live stream every Monday and Friday. So if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, let's go over feature update 2004. We'll first start by just doing a start run and then just typing winver. This gives us what version we're on. Verify your version, make sure you've updated all the way. If you haven't updated or don't have the feature in your updates under settings, you can simply go to Microsoft's software download and then Windows and then just run May 2020 update. This downloads a tool and forces it to update to the latest version of Windows. So with that done, we now are on it. First thing, there's a lot of feature update videos out there. Many of them are going over Cortana expansion. However, I de-bloated all my windows. That's pretty much how a lot of my views come on YouTube is my de-bloat videos and minimal Windows 10. Guess what? I've stripped out Cortana in the past Windows version and it didn't re-add it in 2004 when I did the update. I was shocked that it didn't bloat up my whole system like it normally does on a feature update. Furthermore, it didn't break my dual boot on this machine either. I even tested on the inside machine. Again, dual boot remained. It still has all of those functions, which is great. Uh, other notable things is WSL2. If you go into here, uh, I did have to actually download things, but obviously uh, there's a lot of different ways to force upgrades. So if you are using WSL, switch to WSL2. Uh, the speed increases I've achieved from WSL2 are substantial. It's near uh, blink of an eye start times. So as you see, it boots right into WSL2 from a stop state to the actual command line in practically no time whatsoever, which is pretty darn amazing. So I absolutely love the new WSL2 for doing Linuxy stuff inside of Windows is a substantial improvement. Other improvements are the search features. Under settings, you can go into search and then you can go into searching Windows and there's a new setting called enhanced. Uh, I don't technically do this. I usually do classic and then I literally disable all my search. I don't like this the Windows index at all. I think it's slow and clunky no matter what I'm doing. Um, but if you do like it, do enhanced and then exclude a lot of folders. Exclude as much as you can that you don't want indexed because that will save a lot of uh, processing power on your PC. Uh, so how I actually disable search is in this PC, you can go down to here and then just right click this drive, hit properties, 
And then I usually just uncheck this, hit apply, and then just let it run for like 30 minutes. If you have a lot of files, it may take longer, but I basically disable everything being indexed because I really, really don't like Windows Index. Other feature updates, Windows Hello for sign-in. Uh, you can do pin, you can do face tracking, a whole bunch of other different ways. I'm kind of old school, I don't like any of that. There's a cloud download for the reset PC under settings. This will actually go out and download things. So if we just type reset this PC, you can actually go through and get started with it. And then instead of having the, just the local copy, it'll download and reset the PC to, to basically the standard state from Microsoft. I have never really used reset PC as again, I'm kind of old school and I don't really like the reset PC feature, but for those that get desperate enough to try reset PC, it's an improvement doing cloud download. Uh, other improvements is Bluetooth. Whenever you get like a phone like this, you get it close to your PC that has Bluetooth access. It should read it and connect to it. Uh, fun anecdote here. When you do do this, sometimes certain PCs with certain Bluetooth cards have issues reading any Bluetooth and you can't add any Bluetooth devices, but that's a bug. Microsoft's working on it. Honestly, I think that's pretty minor as it only affects a, a small part of it. And most Windows bugs are pretty bad out of the gate. Uh, so that's pretty much one of the only minor bugs I've done. One other welcome change here is under task manager. If we pull that up, you'll notice some new stuff in actual performance here. Uh, cool thing, it differentiates SSD and hard, regular hard drives. So you can see I have two SSDs and one regular hard drives. And then under GPU, you can see the thermals of the GPU and how much it's being utilized right now. Uh, since I'm actually doing a game stream for this demonstration, I'm not physically on it. Uh, the GPU is working a bit hard uh, to keep up, but that's also because I'm basically sending 4K signals. So this is actually a 4K upscale desktop. Other things like renaming virtual desktops and other features, most people don't use, so I'm not going to go into that. Let's get into the fun thing, which is benchmarking. All right, so let's first start with my inside PC using a Vega card, a Vega 64 card. Uh, I was really interested because the next benchmark's really, really interesting for the NVIDIA card users out there. But this Vega 64 card's a little bit dated. Uh, it did have some issues installing the new driver after I updated to 2004. So it took a couple times and on the, the tests here, very, very similar within 1%. I think this is affected mainly because of my dr graphics driver of choice going from the 19 to the 20 series of uh, graphics drivers from AMD. I think it actually sacrificed and lost a little bit of performance, but 1% is within the margin of error. And then on the CPU side of things, you saw that the CPU score picks up almost 5%. And then uh, as far as the FPS on a CPU test, also almost another 5%. So these are really interesting tests. Uh, and you can see the actual operating system down here. This is 20... 04 coming from 1909, uh, very similar. Everything stays the same as all I did was upgrade. I ran a benchmark prior to the upgrade and then upgraded and then ran the benchmark. A uh, fun thing I thought was really interesting here, uh, in both tests, they actually perform better uh, as far as the CPU and stuff. But here's the next test, which is the inside PC. This is a lower grade CPU and it's using an NVIDIA 2060. So a little more budget PC. And this one saw massive increases across the board in performance uh, from 2004. And I was really, really shocked. As far as the CPU score, we gained almost 9% instead of the five of the traditional 1700 AMD. Uh, so this is a little bit newer hardware that we're running on this PC, although uh, albeit a little bit of a grade down or a step down from the actual performance. This is fantastic. Like these performance bumps were substantial and noticeable. Like I could notice less lag in my system and it forced me to use these benchmarks. And I, I used just time spy 3D mark for these two tests. Not really that scientific, but each test took, you know, probably about 30 minutes to run. And I wanted to make sure I did a before and after of both. And I was really shocked to see this. Most times when I do an upgrade, it rebloats windows and reinstalls a whole bunch of garbage. This one didn't, and it gave me better performance benchmarks, which is very, very surprising. So the benchmarks of 2004, if you're a home user out there, I say go ahead and install it. It's really good. I haven't seen very many bugs, even though 
I am really adamant about not installing a Windows update right when it releases. These results kind of tell me it's worth it. If you're a gamer, uh, it might be worth this upgrade. Uh, I know you might hold off a week or two because that usually gives them to iron out the bigger bugs, but I didn't have any issues with the upgrade or any of my performance, which again is very surprising. I love roasting Windows on how bad a lot of their updates are, but 2004, you know, I got to give them credit. It's pretty darn solid, and I've been very happy with my results. And that's it for the actual updates of 2004. I was really, really happy with this update. Uh, now, I'm not obviously going to be mainlining Windows as I'm still full on Linux user. As since I switched at the end of 2018, I just really haven't looked back. There's still a ton of things I love about Linux desktop but I still have Windows around for some games that just don't play on Linux because of easy anti-cheat or just uh, some publisher restrictions. So with that, let me know your thoughts. How's 2004 working out for you? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't upgraded or you had upgrade problems, also let me know because I love to hear that. I was really surprised by some of the aspects of 2004 and the updates and the fact I didn't have any problems with my dual moot machine was a uh, a welcomed change. Uh, so with all that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.